Hello everyone, it's Andy Glenn here from Sharks TV and welcome to another podcast. This week, joined by Martin Grubb and Liam Stenton. Hello guys, how are you doing? Good Andy, how are you? I'm doing okay, I'm doing okay. How's you Liam? I'm good mate, good to be here, finally getting on uh, one of these podcasts, we're looking forward to it. Good, well, we'll definitely have a good chat with you later on, but um, it's been a week. Um, how's it been? How have you been feeling? Every day is just another day, isn't it? We move forward, we... Um, I'll be lying if I say that I'm still not thinking about last week, but you can't have that in your head too long. You have to move forward. We've got another big weekend ahead of us, so you know, it's all systems go. Been busy in practice so far this week, busy on the, busy on the video, so um, yeah, looking forward to the weekend. I was kind of wary of you coming on the show today, Martin, because I uh, gave Owen a bit of a hard time in his... Well, you didn't give Owen a hard time, but you were clearly unhappy after the, the Leeds game. Um, was that frustration, anger, what? Yeah, about everything, Andy. I think, I mean, Liam will tell you here as a player as well, I don't think anybody can accept and be happy we're losing. And I think it was the manner that we lost that third period in. we we done a great job in getting ourselves back to 4-3. To um, we discussed win a period and you get a chance to take a point off of the current league leaders and last year's champions. And I thought we put ourselves in a really good position or the players put themselves in a really good position, but... Um, yeah, I think a lot of the just the frustration and, and you know the manner of just how how tough that third period went for us. But as I say, I think that I don't think you can stand up there every week and, and you know and almost be happy because we kept saying we're we're getting there, we're close, and but losing's not fun. Losing's not what we do. Losing's not what our group accepts. Um, you know, from ownership to staff, to, to players, and I say Liam will be able to tell you that they don't accept it either, so I guess it was a little bit of an outburst of, of emotion, and uh, you know, I think it probably needed said. It's an emotional game, isn't it? Um, Liam, the thing that was noticeable, I think, to many fans is that when the players were interviewed upstairs in the bar with me, although it's a different interview, our own, own interview and Martin, the message was kind of slightly different. How, how did it feel from... Your perspective after Friday's after Friday's game, eh? Sorry, Sunday's game. Sorry. Yeah, I'm kind of same as Martin. Like we we really don't accept uh, losing in this team. It's not what this group's about. Um, I feel like the players have got to reflect themselves. I mean, I sit after a game, think about it. Then I get my hands start through and I look through my shifts. I reflect on that. But like Martin said as well, you can't you can't let it stay in your head for too long. You've got to clean the slate. You've got a new slate coming into this week. I mean, I've never got to see any of the players' interviews up the stairs, but I'm guessing they're kind of the same as me. Like. We've we've can't accept losing. We've got to start winning. Like that's that's it. We've got to start playing our hockey. Listen to the, what the coaches are telling us to do. We can't be trying to do our own thing. It doesn't work in this league. It might have worked last year. It might have worked the year before when I was still here. But this year, it's we're going to have to listen. We're going to have to take on board everything that's being said, and we're going to have to get the train rolling. I mean, it's a common thing that Martin. I've heard you say so many times. If if the players do what you coach them to do and what you tell them to do, and we get beat, that's on you. If you tell them to do stuff and they go rogue, I think is the the way the way you you described it, the defeats on them, um, it all pretty much hinged on that power play or the, the two power plays at the kind of start of that third. Didn't it? We had the power play for a bit, then we had a thirty second, thirty two second, five on three, and then the remainder of that we scored there, and the momentum's definitely with us. They took a huge amount of momentum from that successful kill. That's from my perspective, that was what looked like decided the game. That how you saw it? Um, it certainly had a big impact. I think, you know, we go back to the week before. Uh, we were a f we were five and three against four one up against the bees. They scored five and three with two seconds to go, and I think that shows the impact and the momentum and the momentum it can have in a game. They went on and obviously they got back to four four. We, I want to say we lost our way in, in Slough that night, but it had an impact. On our, on our kind of energy level and how close we were to killing that five and three Sunday, oh, I, I think you're in a rock and a hard place because everybody's talking this week uh, like we see it. Everybody's talking about shooting the puck. Now, you can't just shoot the puck. You can't just shoot the puck whenever you fancy you know, hit leg pads, short handed breakaways. There's a lot of different elements to this, but. There is an element also that that we do need to shoot the puck a little bit more, and you know we were looking for a, a almost perfect play on that five and three. You got to give Leeds credit; their their kill was tight, 
Sam Gospel, um, you know, I thought both, what, three times we've played them, he's been unbelievable in all three games. Um, the age old saying of your goalie has to be your best penalty killer worked for them. But we had some good looks. I think that's the frustrating thing. We had some good looks and we're creating some good looks in the power play, but we're not converting. And then it, it goes back to can you shoot a little bit more? Um, and within, I think within minutes of them killing that, they, they hit us with a, a quick fire double. Uh, and then you're, you're behind the eight ball. So you've got to. Well, we've got. To, I mean, we're not hiding that. We've got to go back to the drawing board. We got, which we are constantly looking at, at video, looking at our own power play and practice, looking at our penalty kill, looking. You know, this is what I will say, especially for the players. I know, as I say, it's. I, I did talk about them going rogue, but this is not for the want of them trying. This is not for the want of them not being desperate to win hockey games and desperate to do well for themselves and the team and the club. Uh, and. When you review the weekend, I think you've got to look at... We've played the top two teams in the league, and people might not like this, but that's probably not our fight. Our fight is probably everybody else trying to get into eighth, the top eight. Right now, with the budget, the player like, pool, the depth they've got, and, and unfortunately the form they've, that these two teams have got right now, they are the top two teams, and they have been for, for quite a considerable time. And it doesn't mean to say we don't want to, to beat these teams. It does mean to say we don't even think we can, because I know we can. We discussed that, and I thought we played pretty well on the Saturday. Um, and it is just a, a tough situation for everybody when you are, when you, you've won two games a week before. Now, without being disrespectful to any other team, if we had played any other two teams, with the exception of the top two, could we have got even two points at the weekend and we're sitting here in a totally different position? But... It's um, no, it's difficult, but sometimes you've got to say what you've got to say. Give the players a due on Tuesday. The the practice, you know, they've responded. As Liam's just said, there they don't accept defeat. They're right to come upstairs and stay positive. I guess another thing they had never heard that interview by that stage as well. But um, everything is still positive. You know, for, from players all the way right to the top, we're still positive. We know that. Yes, we are still not that close, but we do have to stop making the same mistakes week on week. And power plays and penalty kills are a huge, like special teams are a huge part of this game, and it's something that we're conscious that we just need to get better at. And and in this level of hockey, it probably has a much bigger impact than the level we've been at before. So it's going to take time, but it's something that we're we're consistently reviewing and working on, and and we will get right. I think that's probably a good summary of the the, the weekend. Um, I don't think many folk gave us, maybe it's out with our club, gave us much of a chance to to do much against the top two teams. And we we noticed this week that Leeds have strengthened even further with the signing of uh, Jordan. So uh, thoughts on that? That's that it, it, it puts them in a they look a really 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 strong team now, don't they? Yeah, I mean, I think that let's be honest, they were strong. Um, I think if I was in Ryan's position at Leeds, I'd be looking, saying, "I'm probably I'm missing a a one or or two guys that could make them a lot more experienced and stronger." Because you know that third line, to be fair, they've done a bit of damage against us. They scored some goals, but but they are young and they need time to develop. So it, it's probably an ominous warning to the league that you know Jordan Boyce has signed there. He scored two goals in his debut for them. Um, but like every team, you know, Leeds are no different to ourselves and to Milton Keynes and or Telford, whoever, everybody's always looking to see if they can improve their team and strengthen their team and, you know, we are no different to Leeds in that respect, but we just need to, we need to concentrate on ourselves, it's irrelevant who anybody else is signing um, we believe in the group we've got this group will get better week on week, still also think we have to remember we, we are very inexperienced at, at this specific level and it takes time when you come down for the elite league to adjust to this level and it takes time when you come up from where we were to adjust to this level. So teams are always going to strengthen around us. I think the message now for us is concentrate on ourselves, get stronger with the group we've got. If we can add pieces, if, you know, it's inevitable. We would always try and get better for our for our own group and you know, and believe in ourselves and see where we go. I mean, I, I think as a fan watching from the, the pre-season games to where we are now, we can see we can see progression. Does it? I mean, I'll ask um, you, Liam. Does it feel we're in a better place than we were, say, three or four weeks ago? 
Yeah, 100%. I mean, if you look at the first two periods against Leeds, we're going into the third period, 4-3 down. I mean, if you start of the year, before we've played anybody, if you said to me we're going into Leeds, our 10th game in, 4-3 into the third period, I'd have taken that, 100%. Champions last year, I mean, you know they're going to be strong. They've got probably one of the best players in the league in Kieran Brown, top point scorer last year. I mean, if you tell me that, like I said, at the start of the year, I'd have taken that. But I think we've, from where we were at the pre-season, I feel like we've we've improved quite a lot since then. I mean, there's definitely still things to work on. Everyone knows that. The fans can see that. Coaching staff, players, we all know there's definitely stuff to work on. But I feel like we're, we're going in the right direction, definitely. Yeah, well, that sounds all really positive. Um, and another positive thing is um, your interaction with us. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel. It really, really helps. Um, you get to watch these podcasts for free. You get Martin and Liam for, for free. You've got to pay. And the pay is a like and a share and a subscribe, okay? We see how many people watch. I need everybody to like it. I need everybody to subscribe it. I need everybody to share it. So do that for me, please. Now we're going to go into Coach's Corner. You'll notice that every single week we've improved, I think, on what we're doing. We've got a fantastic new background. The studio is growing. I'm calling it a studio now. It's not a meeting room, guys. Um, it's growing every week. And this week, a little bit different from Coach's Corner. Martin's going to share some of the, the insights. The highlights are there. The highlights are on YouTube. If you just want to watch the goals and some of the hits from the weekend, from the Sunday's game, they're on the YouTube channel. So go and have a watch there. But this is going to be a little bit more in-depth and a little bit more special. So again, let us know what you think about this. I'll hand over to Coach Martin Grubb. Thanks, Andy. Um, you know, I think you and I speak every week on this this Coach's Corner when we've dissected goals. and um, well, If I'm honest, I kind of felt sometimes it's been a... Not in a bad way, but it's telling the, the, the public on kind of what's went wrong and... Mm -hmm. um, you know, players accept that because they get that feedback but uh, I guess it's more just to show a little bit of what goes in behind the scenes on post-game, pre-games um, you know, Liam will be able to add bits in for a player's perspective here on what they get and how video as a tool um, works for us as coaches and I think as a coach now you know, there's a good 75-80% of your time is probably spent with your head in, in a computer looking at video breaking things down um, so we're going to go into you know, it's a tool that the whole league has um, called Instat um, the Elite League use it you know pretty much all the major leagues in, in the world use this tool now and you know this league's had it for a while so it's something that we are now we're part of and um, you know, it starts from or people will be able to see here it starts where you get a dashboard um, on our team so I guess this is see on the Top left of my screen, but um, this is always Sharp's dashboard. It breaks it down into our attack and our defense in terms of goals and chances. Um, I can click on any of these and look at all of our power plays to date, our power play shots, our face offs, things against us. Um, there's some stats in there. I can click on individual players for a lineup and look at what they've done specifically. Um, to allow me to review post game if we go further down that screen every game is there with I can watch the full game and I can tag specific instances in that game if I want myself or the or the players or a specific player to see certain things you can see everybody's ice time so if I want to see Liam Stenton's specific ice time in uh, 20 minutes in that, sh that game I can break down every one of his shifts which also will all get sent to Liam Every game's got a little highlight package that they put together. And uh, <clears throat> obviously every game has the goals in there. So you can you can go as in-depth or uh, you can simply just skip to looking at goals. You also get that from looking at pre-scout. So if we look at this week, for example, we know we're playing Hull. Yeah. So we'll get a, a Hull pre-scout and we get there their dashboard of, again, same thing. The goals have scored, the chances, their, their power plays, etc. Uh, and we get the same in our, our recent games. So we can we can break down stuff and we can look at stuff um, and see exactly how, for example, Hull's power play works against our penalty kill. So if we need to make any adjustment, we 
also share this with the, with the players or we'll make a little pre-scout and share some of their tendencies um, pre-game so that the players are prepared. Um, you know, and, and I've just a little example. If we look at here is a... Now here's, here's what we get from, from Sunday. If we just let it run, this, this shows us the goals. So we see that, that first goal we score, we're on a power play. We have a, we have a nice breakout and you know, Danny gains his own. We see Peaks coming into shot. Oh, and, he, and he shoots the puck. And quite simply, that's execution, if you want to call it that. We, we've been asking for um, a couple of set plays and we've been asking for guys to shoot the puck and that that is one of the times where you know you have to shoot it. We're in the slot. We're in a great position. We've entered the zone against a good penalty kill, as we know. We've entered the zone really easily, which is very pleasing, uh, and got ourselves a, a grade A scoring chance. And you know we've buried it. So in terms of that, and, and goal one, you, it's really nice to see. We were looking so good at that point. That whole first period, first 15, 16 minutes, Started we were really looking well, really, yeah. really good. And then we go. Obviously, we get as this. On my rant, I suppose you want to call it. This is where we started saying we we went a wee bit rogue. Um, our wingers meant not meant to be on the wall. They get across. We got to tie up sticks in front of the net. It's just a bit slack yeah. from us. I think that we can be better. Then, as we can see in the, the clock, there you know, there's, there's fifty seconds to go, and the puck's on our stick. I think I said that in the interview that there's and, and again. Liam jumps in any anytime he wants here of the frustration from myself and the staff and and, and the players is you know we we've got pucks on our stick a lot of the time and then next thing we know it ends up in, in our net. So we've got the puck, you know we we make it again. It's a blue line turnover. We talk about it a lot. We've got it again. Unfortunately, a little mistake ends up in our net. I mean, back in kill there, like, you're in that position, you're you're one on two, you're the guy with the puck, you're the last guy back. It's tough to know what's behind you. So maybe he never got a shout knowing that there was two guys on him. He'd been, I mean, he might have seen the guy in the middle, so he tried to go up the wall. Maybe if he gets a bit more on it, it goes off the glass, it's out of the zone, we're 1-1 one, one after the first. But, I mean, it's tough. It's a little mistake, he'll know himself. I mean, you could see it on the bench, he was absolutely raging with himself after that first period. Um, but, I mean, it's a lot of mistake. You've got to brush it off and get back out there and, and do your job again. But, like I said, it's tough. It's all about communication, Hockey. And maybe he never got a little shout to know he was two guys on him. Maybe he did, and he just didn't quite get the puck up to the glass. But, I mean, it's a lot of mistake, and he'll brush it off and we'll go again. We all make them. Like, we're humans. Martin will back me as well. Coaches make mistakes. Players make mistakes. Like, it's it's Hockey. It's what happens. We're humans. Everyone's going to make them, and it's just unlucky that it was killed at that point. I think for me, is sometimes we never really see ourselves in those attacking positions very often and it seems other teams have got that experience maybe know to make those crucial mistakes at those crucial times because we were looking like going into that, that that first period break winning and before you know it just that last couple of minutes or so and we're behind and that I guess that changes your your message that you were going to be saying in the, in the dressing room Martin yeah but you know I think Liam's 100% right it's we, we are going to make mistakes and, and so are Leeds, you know, so are any other team we play. Unfortunately for us right now, the harsh lesson seems to be that, uh, and I guess it's the way you feel at times, but it seems that every time we make one, it ends up in our net. It costs us, doesn't and, it? And every time you know, somebody else makes one, we at this stage maybe not quite experienced enough or ruthless enough. But the one thing about this team and the, and the players in this team is, you know, as Liam's quite rightly said, that at no point was there any finger pointed at Kel or anybody, you know, having a go at a specific player because it happened. There's also, say, there's a wee bit of turnover further up in the blue line. There's, it's, it's a team. It's a team and people try and lift each other. And the hardest part, I think, right now, and again, Liam will be able to, to share more from the player's point of view, but what I see is that sometimes we are struggling with the mistakes in terms of we, we do seem to get punished on them whereas you know he was in the elite league last year he, he knows that you make a mistake you do get punished whereas for us you look at I mean you're, you're taking him we're not picking on Kel by any means here but you look at Kel last year 99 times out of 100 he gets away with that 
because we were by far the best team in the league and some of these teams would never even have thought to send a guy two guys on them one one hunt them down that the the play off the wall most teams even in this league some teams wouldn't even have, have had the guy on the wall to, to intercept that puck they would have just forced them and swung with them and you say uh, it's a game inches right it, it goes off the glass it goes out so it's just this this team sticks together and it is it would have been a totally different message i think probably in the majority of people in the building's head we were going in here one nothing up and we, and we would have deserved it and and you know we had chances to maybe be two maybe yep. be three nothing up so it is the little things but i guess that's why you know we're, we're kind of sitting here now and we're dissecting a bit and the players see this that video is a massively powerful tool because you see the good and the, the development area yeah. i don't i don't like to kind of call it the bad but there's always areas you know for myself as well as as Liam rightly said, there's development areas. So if we look at this, what happens if we're in this situation again? The video doesn't lie, so I think it's a great a great thing for the players to see that. I, I wonder if I can maybe ask you, Liam, as a as a fan who's who's never who's never played, we appreciate mistakes happen. So when a mistake happens to you as such, and you hardly make a mistake, Liam, but as you say, everybody makes a mistake at some point. How how do you react to that? Does that make you, as a, an individual player, think, right, I'm going to try everything I can here to to get that mistake back? Do you sometimes try too hard individually or do you just bond together as a team? You kind of indicated it's a team element, but how do you feel as that individual? I mean, if you watch the Milton Keynes game, I uh, I think their fourth or fifth goal, I missed the puck in the blue line, lost my stick, and they went down and scored. I mean, I came off, I wanted to smash my stick across the glass, but I'm not going to do that. And you just got to kind of compose yourself, take a few deep breaths, think about it, wipe it off, because you can't go back out there thinking about it again or it might happen again. You've got to go out there thinking about what you need to do, do your simple jobs, get the puck over the blue line, get a change, make a pass, get a change, just make, make your next shift the best shift of the game. I mean, I, I mean, I went in after that period because it was quite near the end and I was still raging. But again, wipe it off, retake my stick, a bit of positive self-talk, like you're fine. You go out there in the third period and I get another goal. So, I mean... Didn't win as a game, but I probably should have had three as well if you watched that interview in Milton Keynes. Um, but I mean, you just got to... Personally, I like... It's probably a bad thing. Martin says it to me all the time, but I take the team on my back and I try and do too much. Uh, if I make a mistake doing that, then I feel even worse. But if I make a mistake doing simple things, I just know I've got to go out there and make my next shift the best shift of the game. I think that's probably why Martin's one of the best coaches in the country and your experiences at Elite have taught you that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> And I take it as our team develops, because a lot of them don't have that experience, they'll be picking up that sort of thing from you and, and Martin as well. Yeah, definitely. Don't. I said it to Kill after the after the first period. I said, just wipe it off. Clean slate, go again. You'll be fine. And he played the all right for the rest of the game, to be fair. He had a decent game. Um, maybe another few mistakes he might, might want back. A few plays he made that were really good. So, like I said, it's, it's a game of percentages as well. Like you've got to play your percentages, go out that next shift. If you see a pass, it's maybe 70%. Don't make it. Make the one as 100 and then got off the ice and you've you've done your job for that shift and you go out again and do the same thing. That's brilliant insight. Thank you for that. Thanks yeah, for sharing that. I think when it comes, comes to mistakes, well, we kind of the mentality we've got here is you've got to have a memory of goldfish. Ah, just forget it and get on. 100%. Like, what what good is it going to do you to, to keep going back over it and over it? And it's easy saying this. It's easy for me sitting here. It's easy for a fan in the stands to say, oh, you got to shake it off. Sometimes it's difficult when you're in the moment, but you know, with our leadership group um, and the experience we've got, and as Liam's just said, you know, the players help each other. I think that's the key. There's not a blame culture here. There never will be. There has to be an element of you have to realise you can make a mistake because it is human. What we do talk about is how we react to it. If you make that two or three times the same one it's a bad habit mm. if you have that kind of goldfish memory and you make it once you take it on board and you move on like we'll be we'll be successful both individually and collectively so um become a better player because of it 100%. i think that's exactly where where fans maybe you know i i, I wasn't aware of insta and all this sort of stuff i just thought martin rocked up at you know five o'clock, had a wee chat, put it, fuck it. No, obviously there's a lot of work goes into this. 
and I hope you guys appreciate the amount of work that goes in. Um, and you as individual players get packages in this as well, Liam, don't you? Yeah, so every after every game, within 40, 48 hours, we usually get an email with um, like that little dashboard that you've seen. Sometimes we get a, a separate email that's got our individual shifts or penalty time or fouls against ourselves and stuff like that. Um, but I watch every shift back. Sometimes I watch the full game if I've got the time, but I always, I always go over every shift that I've been on the ice. And if there's anything that's missing that I want to see, that I want to see, I, I play where I was maybe just coming on. It wasn't quite in my shifts. I'll go back through the game and find it. Um, but I, I really like video. Videos really, really helped me in my the last few years of my game. And um, going moving up to the league, getting the video from there. Martin done a little bit when I was still here um, before I moved up. And away with, with Great Britain as well. You get your instat through that as well. So it's it's a really good tool. And I've been working with uh, young Owen Ray, who's in a little prospect um, little group. So I've been working with him, going over his video when he's been playing for uh, Witness as well, and he, he loves it. It's it's a good thing to get on board with when you're such such a young age. And uh, yeah, like I said, I love it, and I always always go over all my shifts. Do you think every player does that, man? Do you know what? I, th I think the majority do. I think especially the, but some of this is new to some of the guys. Obviously, step them up here, so I think there'll be curiosity. Yeah, I think the experienced guys, as Liam said, the guys that have been at that higher level, I think really all do enjoy it. And you know, especially if you've done something good in the game. I think oh yeah, you want to watch that, that right? yeah. Like I'm sure, I'm sure. He, I know, I know Liam obviously better than a lot of people. That I know he would have went over that little mistake he made because I seen it obviously on the bench. It was it hurt for him. It's kind of player he is. I also know he would have liked to have watched the the two goals he scored <laughs> on Saturday night. Probably still, as as I know it's in his head, thought he should have scored on the the other chance he had to get a hat trick. But it's nice to see that you're doing things right. Even from a coaching point of view, there's nice to the. There's nothing better than looking over the clip and saying, do you know what, that four check was exactly what we wanted. Yeah. Same for a player. There's nothing better than watching the positives and it helps with the, the maybe the the negatives of coaches told you to do this better. Well, let's just watch it. So I do, th I think, I think nowadays, you know, even just the the generation we're in, the younger generation love video, love yeah. video games, they love, and, and, a lot of our players are a wee bit hockey geeks, so they I think they do quite enjoy this. And let's say pre game, you know, we'll, we'll have a pre game meeting and there'll be some video clips of both us and our opponents and that as well. And everybody's very receptive on there. So I think it was, you know, we could obviously, you know, we could spend our time going through every goal like we have or every brief power play, whatever. But this little segment was more a chance to enlighten people of the work that goes in, the tools that are out there how receptive the players are to, to teaching and learning. Um, and, and, you know, I see how powerful a tool this is for us to, in our journey to get better. And we'll continue to use this plus more, um, as well as our own ice side, to help me become a better coach, Jamie become a better coach, and the players become a better team. So well, hopefully it's helped. Th I found it absolutely fascinating. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've learned a, a lot. Liam, you've got to have the memory of a goldfish. Then I'll be thinking about the third <laughs> goal against uh, Milton Keynes. That's past, man. I know, I get I it, right? Okay. I've been paying we'll attention. Move on. I've been we'll paying move attention. On. <laughs> what did you guys think? Was that interesting? Was it better than just going through the goals? What will we do next week? Will we maybe do a bit of both? I don't know. You let us know. Let us know the comments. But thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Looking forward to this weekend with, with both of you, um, I would say it's quite an important weekend. I think we need two points. What's your thoughts? I think every weekend's an important weekend. Of course. Um, I think we need four points. <laughs> but uh, we think that every weekend. I say even credit to the players. Going into last weekend, we talked about the top two teams. We still thought we were... We still went to try and get four points. So um, I think Saturday, obviously, the focus is purely on Saturday. Um, you know, Matty Davis has um, built a good team there. He's brought some guys home. Um, you know, Bobby Chamberlain, Lee Bonner, Declan Bammer's back there as an ex Shark. You know, I think it'll be nice to see Liam Danskin back um, in the rink after having his success here. Jordan McLaughlin's there. Um, they've they've brought in. They've got three good imports, so they're not they're not third place and two points off the top for a reason. They've obviously worked hard. They came in here last year and, and also know where how it feels to be where we are. I mean, we keep using Hull and Bristol as benchmarks of, to be fair to them, they took a couple of heavy beatings early last year with some issues they had. But it shows you how quickly it can turn around and that's got to be a kind of an, 
an inspiration and a bit an aspiration of ours. So it is a, it's a big weekend. It'll be a tough game. But I have no doubt in my mind that we have the group that can, can win and can compete if we execute the way we did for you know, probably, to be fair, 30, 35 minutes against Leeds. Like, we had them worried, I think. Everybody could see, even coming back, 4-1, they thought it might have been over. 4-3, we'd come back. We have a lot of good elements to our game, and we have to bring that for 60 minutes on Saturday. And we're all looking forward to trying to get a big two points. Liam, your thoughts on Saturday? It's mainly the same as Martin. I mean, you play this game and enjoy it, and winning's enjoyable. So you're, you want to win every game, you go into every game wanting to win. I mean, like you said, we went into this weekend, or the weekend just passed, sorry, wanting to win both games. Didn't quite work out like that. Um, but yeah, we're definitely going in this weekend for them four points. If we get two, we get two. If we get four, we get four. Hopefully we don't get none, but I mean, it's hockey and you never know what's going to happen. But it's going to be two good games, so fans, get yourself down. And um, We love the support. We love hearing you all in the stands, making as much noise as you can. So keep the support up and we'll hopefully bring some, some points home this weekend. Yeah, I, I hope so too. And I kinda, as you're talking there, it makes me just remember, it makes me just think that um, Hull... Are probably having the same podcast with their same <laughs> their their fans saying exactly the same things. They're desperate to win as well, um, and you kind of said a couple of weeks ago, Martin, it's uh, who's more desperate, who really wants to 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 win this. Well, we've tasted we've tasted um, victory in the short time before, and it was a brilliant a brilliant night. You know the fans are going to be a hundred percent behind you, as you as you say, Liam. Before we end, a message to the fans from yourself, Martin. It's the usual usual message. Um, a wee bit different this week, I think. It's stay Ooh. patient. Stay patient. Like we we appreciate I think we've said it all. Well, we love the fans coming here. I agree with Liam, the noise, the support, you know, the, the appreciation that we have for our fans is is always gonna be second to none. We're a we're a family, we're a community. It's always been our, our values. But please stay patient and remember that we are working hard. These players are trying their best. The staff are trying their best. We are, um, I keep saying it, we are desperate to win for the fans as much as we are ourselves. Um, and we're going to get two points on Saturday. Liam? Just back on what Martin said there. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a long season. We've won two out of, I think, ten games. That's not terrible for a, a team that's just, just entered into the league. A lot of new players, uh, a lot of players haven't played together as well. I mean, yeah, we're, we're coming on Saturday wanting two points. Well, that's the message from the, the, the folks here, is to, to stay patient um, and appreciate how much work goes into it. You've seen a bit of the video analysis. Bear in mind, the vast majority of these guys are doing a nine-to-five job as well and practice three nights a week and away at the weekend. It's a commitment, so you know we appreciate all, all, all the efforts that are that are put in. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us today. Thank you for taking time off work. We have to come along and speak with us as well. Totally appreciate that. Um, thank you and uh, good luck for the weekend. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Always Andy. a pleasure. Cheers. Take care, folks. We'll see you soon.